join me in our opening prayer. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Living in your presence, we have nothing to fear. Open our hearts to your word this day as we hear the story of the call of the first disciples. Make us ready to follow Jesus on whatever path he leads us. Cast aside our fears and doubts and teach us to trust wholly in you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Psalter reading today is from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is mighty. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. 
Surely the low-born are but a breath, the high-born but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they're nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or in put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love and your reward, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. morning and welcome to Church on the Couch. It's January 24th and today I'm wearing a snowman tie because it is winter and we've had a bit of snow in the last couple days here. But one of the reasons why I opted for a snowman tie today is I'm not always crazy about snow but the things we can do in it give us joy like making snowmen, skiing, uh, I don't know, watching it out the window when you don't have to travel on it. Uh, so I wear the snowman today as a reminder that even when things are difficult, there's always something that we can find joy in. And I think that's an important theme uh, in the midst of the week that we've all been in and the weeks that we've been in. Uh, but before we begin our prayer time, I'm forgetting that I haven't introduced you to our team. So today I introduce Martha Wilbur, who's our liturgist today. Lisa Kisselstein is our uh, guest uh, soloist today, and Sue Candy, who is the organist at our um, at Pennerville, <laughs> hello, is um, our lead musician. One of the things that I've uh, been posting on Facebook in the last couple weeks is, is a, call, a daily call to prayer. And one of the things that I have found has received the most traction our breath prayers. So today I'm going to just try something a little bit different as I lead us in our morning prayer. Rather than going through a whole category of prayers and then calling us to the Lord's Prayer, which we will say together, I am going to speak some categories and then invite us to a breath prayer. And if you've never done a breath prayer, it's as easy as taking a breath. You inhale, some words that we will give you and you exhale. You can use any words. You can use words of scripture. Today I'm, uh, we're going to use um, some specific particular words as we go through our prayer. When I am afraid, and then you breathe out, I put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And then, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. And then, Christ our Savior, have mercy on me. Christ our Savior, have mercy on me. And I'll lead you into those. Friends, let us join hearts together and let us pray and breathe 
through the grace of God together. Let's pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for this day. We have been uh, dealing with all sorts of things that add to the stress and the anxiety of the day. So, as easy it is as taking a breath, we pray to you this day. Lord, help us through our anxieties, through our difficulties, through our stresses of illness, of, of division in our country, in our communities, and in, sometimes in our, in our families. Help us to know that when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Let us breathe that. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Help us bring our prayers to you. Help us to remove those things that are causing such stress and division and difficulty in our own lives and the lives of our community and become barricades in our faith and give those to you. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray each one for forgiveness. Forgiveness that we can feel in such a way that we know that to, to be forgiven, we then, we can also forgive. Help us to forgive, to be forgiven and to forgive. Help us to, to receive mercy and to share mercy. Help us to know that even though things are going well for us, sometimes they're not going well for someone else. Help us to understand the burdens of others. Be with each one of us, we pray. Christ Jesus, have mercy on me. Christ Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord God, we give you the prayers of the people. We offer you all those things that we have spoken out loud in our, in our days and that rest on our hearts. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus and pray that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And God will raise you up on eagles' wings. Bear you on the breath of dawn. Make you to shine like the sun. And hold you in the palm of God's
Our gospel reading today is from Mark 1, verses 14 through 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Fall afresh on each one of us gathered here, so that both speaker and hearer will know your will for us today. Amen. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men is one of those scripture verses that is forever embedded in our memory. That whole scene of Jesus walking along the shoreline calling those first four disciples is a favorite among preachers and Sunday school teachers alike. I have vivid memories of learning the disciple song to the tune of Jesus Loves Me as we followed the leader. And I also remember running along in a group with a big net trying to catch other kids as we were making disciples. We were making fishers of men. We love the thought that after meeting Jesus, these fishermen just walked away from their nets. James and John stepped out of a fishing boat and left their father behind. But as we hear those words and even repeat those words, I'll make you fishers of men. I don't think there's a lot of us who see ourselves doing that, at least not in that dramatic of a fashion. Maybe we're not dropping nets, and maybe we're not selling all our possessions. But this call story in Mark is not, is not just about other people. It's also about us and our own call to follow Jesus. We remember follow me, but we don't always remember the powerful proclamations that came before that invitation. When Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. Here, Jesus is starting his ministry, is bringing a whole new beginning with a proclamation and an invitation that is not limited to those fishermen or other disciples, or even the readers then, but for every generation that followed and follows. Each one of us needs to hear or follow me, but not just in the context of others dropping their nets and following Jesus but understanding what it means to have Jesus in our midst, saying to a waiting, hurting world, the time for waiting is over. The time for action is upon us. I am here. What do you suppose the fishermen heard that day? After all, they were scraping out this living as fishermen. They were living under Roman occupation and its very strict rules. Life was tough. It was short on hope. From their view, it could not have looked very much like God's kingdom was very near. Yet in Jesus, they saw opportunity for transformation, for a new life, and they followed. And what do you suppose we hear today? In so many ways, things are a mess. So many deaths from the coronavirus and so much disruption and isolation to so many lives. And there are, in these days of division and threats to everything we understand as American governance has been under the threat of violence. From that view, it doesn't feel like God's kingdom is very near, does it? But then we're brought back to this moment. When Jesus, fresh out of the wilderness, ready to begin 
calls each of us to the moment, saying, repent and believe. Repent literally means to change direction. To believe we must move from wherever it is that we are and change direction. Turn around. And when we do that, we move away from whatever it is we are facing, whatever it is that we can see, so that we can see Jesus. And when we see Jesus, when we believe, we drop our figurative nets and we follow. Even if we couldn't see this new promised kingdom on the horizon, even if they couldn't see this new promised kingdom on the horizon, these four men, these four fishermen made the turn. They turned. They saw Jesus. And they followed. By changing position, they are now in perfect position to receive God's gift of forgiveness and salvation and begin to see the miracles, be part of the healing and experience this kingdom up close. Believing the good news required them to now live it. And to now live it, they first had to turn around. They had to change perspective. You and I face a similar challenge today. I think most of us think that we are facing in the right direction. After all, we are followers of Jesus. But I'm not sure that we can always see Jesus from where we are standing. I think we have to be careful not to think that repenting and believing are a one and done proposition. Sure, there may be this one big moment of yes. This is the one I believe. This is the one I follow. But then as we journey along in this thing called life, things happen that pull our attention away. Other things take priority. And our following gets to be a little haphazard or even half-hearted. And it doesn't have to be a crisis. It can be the way we order our lives and determine what's important. Different decisions and different priorities pull us further and further away from Jesus. So it comes to a point where it's sort of hard to tell who's leading whom. Are we following Jesus or are we fitting him in? Are we fitting him in or are we expecting him to work around our stuff, our beliefs, our busy schedules. Remember that for the disciples, believing the good news required that they now live it, not fit it in, not work around it, but live it fully. And not lead Jesus with their own worldview, but follow Jesus into this promised kingdom. So in the past few weeks, when I have been repeating our baptismal vows to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, to reject evil and repent of our sin, I am reminding us of this invitation to follow Jesus. I am reminding us in the midst of chaos, in a time when people try to will their own power rather than rely on the will of God's power, in a time that seems scary and bleak, that seems absent of hope, that our hope, Jesus Christ, is right there. Are we turned in the right direction to see him? Are we ready to follow? And to follow is to live it. And to live it, friends, means staying focused on Jesus even when other things call us away. It means loving neighbor itself. It means doing unto one another as we would have them do unto us. To live it means that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It means living the words of Jesus that say, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. To live it means using our gifts to do these things. To bring hope to others, to serve, to feed, to close, to provide light in the darkest corners of the world. To live is to follow. To never wonder who is leading whom. But staying on course and following the one who not only leads the way, but is the way. Let's drop our nets and follow. Amen. Please join me in this prayer of confession. Loving God, we listen to the stories of the call of the disciples and find them interesting but unrealistic. When we look at our own lives, we believe that we could not leave everything to follow Jesus. We have too many responsibilities and ties which keep us from following the way those disciples did. But God is persistent and keeps calling us to following. It may not mean leaving everything behind, but it does mean trusting and following wherever God calls us. It's hard. We place conditions on when we follow and where we go. Forgive us, patient and persistent Lord, for the very many times we turn our backs on serving you and focus on our own comforts. Forgive us when we look the other way when people are in need. Forgive us our angry attitudes and actions which hurt rather than heal. Wrap your arms around us, healing our wounds, binding us to you. Gently move us into service in your name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God is, do not be afraid. God is with you. That's good news. You do not have to go through life alone wondering if anyone cares about you or knows your heart. God knows and God loves you. Rejoice for thus it is, has always been, and will always will continue to always be. God's love for you is eternal. Amen. Will you come and follow me? If I but call your name, will you go where you don't roam and never be the same? Will you let my vision? Will you let my name be Will you let my life be known? Yourself behind if I but call your name. Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Let the blinded see if I but call your name. Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? 
and admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you've found to reshape a world around? Will my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Or do summons echo true if I but call your name? Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you a generous son. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.